going on, Vinyl community? Welcome to another video with The Record Spinner. In today's video, I'm going to be doing part three of favorite albums of artists that I collect. I've started this series earlier this year, and if you want to check out the rest of the entries that I've done, be sure to click the icon in the top right-hand corner. Uh, for part three, we are going to be focusing on the letters L to R. And like I always say, enough of the chit-chat. Let's jump into what this video is all about. Starting off with Led Zeppelin, and this is their third album, aptly titled Led Led Zeppelin 3. Uh, this is the acoustic album. This is when the band kind of went in a more folkier acoustic kind of direction. Uh, despite the fact that there are some awesome rockers on this, such as uh, Immigrant Song, Celebration Day, and the bluesy Since I've Been Loving You, but it's songs like Friends, Tangerine, That's the Way, Bron Rar Stomp, you know, that really make this record unique. And I always love it when Zeppelin goes down the acoustic route, and uh, that's what makes this particular Led Zeppelin album my favorite. And then next up, we get into some Beatles territory with John Lennon, and this is his first solo album, the Plastic Ono Band album. Uh, right off the bat, the opening track, Mother is such a heart-wrenching song. You just feel the pain in his voice as that song progresses. And then, of course, we have things like Love, a uh, working-class hero, God. Um, kind of a bit, I guess you could say in a quasi, kind of lo-fi kind of vein. And this was when uh, he was doing the whole primal therapy thing. So this album is very reflective of that. But honestly, I think this was... Lennon at his most raw in terms uh, of being a solo artist after the Beatles. And then next up, we go into some more kind of modern territory with Linkin Park, Minutes to Midnight. Now, this album was kind of the big crossover for Linkin Park because for their first two albums, they had established the whole kind of new metal meets rap kind of sound. And this right here kind of works in some more, you know, alternative elements that they would delve into in their future work. But um, this album is full of amazing tracks. There's things like um, What I've Done, which is probably the big notable one on this record. Leave Out All the Rest, Bleed It Out, Shadow of the Day is a beautiful song, Given Up, uh, No More Sorrow is a great rocking tune, Valentine's Day. Uh, if you really want to check out for yourself one of the best albums of the 2000s, this is the one to check out. And then we kind of go back into Beatles territory, and technically this covers both Paul McCartney and Wings as well. That is... Band on the Run. This is a fantastic record. It includes the amazing title track, uh, Jet, uh, Bluebird. Uh, my personal favorite on this is um, Let Me Roll It. Just a great, loose, rocking tune. Uh, just an absolutely great album from McCartney. And then we get into some metal territory with Metallica and Justice for All. Uh, this was Jason Newstead's first album with the band as bass player after Cliff Burton had passed. And uh, this kind of sees the band going in a slightly proggy kind of direction in terms of the song lengths than the arrangements. Uh, Blackened opens up this album. Just a great album opener. The title track is awesome. Uh, probably my favorite song on here is Eye of the Beholder. And then, of course, we have the big uh, hit on here, which was One, uh, Shortest Straw. Harvester of Sorrow, uh, To Live is to Die, uh, just a really great album from Metallica, and uh, definitely one that kind of paved the way of what would come in the future with things such as the Black Album. And now we go into the complete, total opposite musical direction from Metallica, and that is... The Monkeys Headquarters. This is the band's third album. This is the one where they played the instruments. And uh, quite a bit of a gamble, considering that they had let go of Don Kirshner, who was their musical director, and basically kind of was giving them guaranteed number one hits, uh, written by Boyce and Hart, and having all the session players play on them and just have them sing. But uh, I guess they wanted in on the action, and they definitely got what they wanted. Was it for better or for worse? Not quite sure, because this album did debut at number one, and then literally right after that, Sgt. Pepper came, and this was kind of forgotten. But I digress. Uh, there are some fantastic songs on this album. There's um, uh, Forget That Girl, You Just May Be The One, uh, one of my personal favorites, probably my favorite Monkey song, Shades of Grey, uh, For Pete's Sake, um, Mr. Webster, Randy Skouskit. Um, this pressing that I have is the Sundays 1996 version, and it includes uh, the song All of Your Toys, uh, which is it's a crime that it's not on the uh, original album, but it's cool that, that it's featured here within this pressing. 
And now we get to some glam metal with Motley Crue's Too Fast for Love. This is their first album, and honestly, this album is absolutely perfect. You have the amazing opener, Livewire, Public Enemy Number 1, Merry Go Round, Take Me to the Top, Piece of Your Action, on with the show. This album just absolutely rocks. And I'm very happy that when I saw uh, the band uh, the first time around on their farewell tour, uh, most of the set list comprised from this album. And that was just a treat to hear all those songs live. And now we get into some grunge with Nirvana's Nevermind. Now, when a band only has three studio albums in their discography, it's kind of tough to choose which one I would want to pick. But honestly, when it, when it comes to uh, Nirvana, I go to this album. And sure, it has all the hits on it. You have Smells Like Teen Spirit, In Bloom, Come As You Are, In Lithium. But even some of the other tracks that were not necessarily hits are absolutely fantastic. Uh, there's Breed, uh, Polly, uh, Drain You, On a Plane, Something in the Way. This album is truly one of the most important albums to come out of the 90s and simply one of the greatest rock albums ever. Then we go old school with the Motor City Madman himself, Ted Nugent, and this is his self-titled solo album. This was after uh, he had kind of disbanded the uh, Amboy Dukes, uh, originally a member of them, and then he kind of asserted control over them, and then he um, basically went on his own. Right off the bat, you have Stranglehold, Stormtroopin', Just What the Doctor Ordered, Motor City Madhouse, of course. Um, hey baby, where have you been all my life? Queen of the Forest. Uh, this is just a great 70s hard rock album. Granted, aside from the politics and how he kind of portrays himself in you know the world and the media, there is no denying the fact that this man made some amazing, amazing music. And now we get into the Prince of Darkness with Diary of a Madman by Ozzy Osbourne. Um, I have a lot of fondness for this album. I got this on cassette for Christmas as a kid back when I was like, I want to say five years old. You didn't see a lot of five-year-olds getting this album on cassette for Christmas. But uh, this album is awesome. You have uh, Over the Mountain, Flying High Again, Believer. Um, the title track is absolutely amazing. How the, like There's the choir at the very end. It's just so powerful and anthemic. Um, truly an amazing album from Ozzy. And this was, of course, uh, Randy Rhodes' uh, last album with him before he passed away. And uh, what an album to kind of leave an entire legacy on. And now we go a little bit uh, modern with... Paramore's Brand New Eyes. This came out back in 2009. I remember this vividly when it came out. And uh, this has some amazing, amazing tunes. Some stuff that's kind of in Paramore's regular kind of pop punk vein with things like Careful, Ignorance, and uh, Brick by Boring Brick. But this also features some more kind of uh, acoustic alternative type stuff with things like playing god uh turn it off the only exception which was a big hit uh, my favorite track on this album is uh misguided ghost it's just a beautiful uh really calm acoustic number uh definitely an album worth checking out if you haven't checked out paramore they're really really awesome and then we get to my second favorite band of all time, Next to Kiss, and that is Pink Floyd. And my pick is their first album, The Piper at the Gates of Dawn. And one thing I'm going to say, and there's absolutely no denying this notion, if it wasn't for this guy right here, Sid Barrett, there would be no Dark Side of the Moon. There would be no, you know, Wish You Were Here, The Wall. You know, this is the album that got the ball rolling, and it's this guy here that got the ball rolling. This is one of the quintessential 60s psychedelic rock albums. Uh, you uh, have a whole bunch of Sid Barrett compositions on this album, like Astronomy Domini, Lucifer Sam, Matilda Mother, Flaming, uh, Chapter 24, Scarecrow, Bike. And then, of course, you have some instrumentals on here um, that were written by the entire band, like Power Talk H. And, of course, uh, the standard uh, in terms of their live set, which is Interstellar Overdrive. Uh, just a great psychedelic rock album. Really kind of takes you back to that whole Summer of Love kind of zeitgeist. And uh, this is just an absolutely great record from the Floyd. I know when it comes to early Floyd, you know, it's kind of an acquired taste. A lot of people start at Dark Side and don't really look too back. But honestly, this album is worth a chance because it just simply got the ball rolling for them. And then we get to the masterwork that is Queen 2. 
Uh, literally two albums in, and this band is embarking on major musical adventures uh, in terms of the arrangements on this album and their ways of recording. Uh, starts off with the very kind of royal uh, instrumental procession, which is all uh, multi-layered guitars, no synthesizers or anything like that. Uh, Father to Son, uh, White Queen, uh, one of my personal favorite Queen songs, which is Someday, One Day, which uh, Brian May sings lead on. And then you have the very raucous uh, Roger Taylor song Loser in the End and then literally the entire second side is like a little mini rock opera it starts off with Ogre Battle goes into the Fairy Feller's Masterstroke then kind of simmers down to Nevermore and then you have March of the Black Queen which is almost like a predecessor to Bohemian Rhapsody in terms of the whole kind of rock operatic kind of thing Funny How Love Is, and then the last track, Seven Seas Awry, which was the band's first real big hit. Um, just an absolutely beautiful record, and uh, when it comes to Queen, this is the one I pull out the most. And then we go a little bit more modern with this amazing, amazing supergroup, The Tours. This is their first album, Broken Boy Soldiers. Uh, we got Jack White from The White Stripes, singer-songwriter Brendan Benson, and then we have Jack Lawrence and Patrick Keeler of The Greenhorns. Uh, just some great... 2000s you know kind of revival rock of course this album includes steady as she goes that's the big hit that everyone knows off of this album uh hands uh the title track together which is just a beautiful ballad uh level store bought bones uh blue veins which is just this great soulful album closer uh you really need to hear the song live because then they just kind of stretch out the arrangement and it's so loose and when the band comes in it is just absolutely powerful Definitely need to check this out. This is as well one of the greatest rock albums of the 2000s. And then we get into some hard rock slash proto metal with Rainbow Rising. Rainbow featured, of course, Richie Blackmore on guitar. He was kind of the main driving force of the band after he had left Deep Purple. And then in this lineup, since it almost changed every album, uh, you have Ronnie James Dio on vocals, Cozy Powell on drums, Tony Carey on keyboards, and Jimmy Bain on bass. This album is majestic as ever. It starts off with Terra Woman, which has these really kind of ethereal waves of synthesizers. The guitar kicks in, the drum fill starts, and then the band kicks right in. It is awesome. Uh, Run With The Wolf, Starstruck, Do You Close Your Eyes, and then literally side two is perfection. You have Stargazer, and a light in the black stargazer has the munich philharmonic playing towards the very end and then a light in the black in the middle instrumental section you have the dueling synthesizers and guitars it is just absolutely awesome and when you listen to this album you can kind of see like the seeds of things like power metal the new wave of british heavy metal and things like that you could definitely hear on this record uh this is one that you must check out it is awesome and then we go into the punk direction with The Ramones, Road to Ruin. This was Marky Ramones' uh, first album with the band after Tommy had left. And this was also produced by uh, Tommy Ramone and uh, Ed Stasium. Of course, this features the one that everyone knows, I Want to Be Sedated. Uh, but you also get things like, I Just Want to Have Something to Do, I Wanted Everything, uh, the cover of the uh, Sonny Bono track, uh, Needles and Pins, I'm Against It. Uh, she's the one bad brain, which is just this amazing frantic punk rock tune from the Ramones. Uh, and then you even, uh, have some more kind of mellow acoustic moments on this, such as don't come close and, uh, questioningly, um, it's a really great solid album, a bit diverse in places in terms of the contrast between the really hard rocking tunes and some of the acoustic ones. But, uh, it's one that I think represents the Ramones quite well. And then we get to the classics with. Rolling Stones, Let It Bleed. This, of course, features the big notable track, Gimme Shelter, Love in Vain, which is just a great bluesy kind of tune. Uh, country Honk, kind of like a country tinge to Honky Tonk Woman. Live With Me, great raucous tune. Uh, Midnight Rambler, of course, Monkey Man. And then the closer, epic, You Can't Always Get What You Want. Absolutely solid album from the Stones. And the last album we are going to get to is a real dynamite album, and that is 
Rush, Hemispheres. This was the kind of last real proggy kind of album from them. I mean, they still had some prog elements in their sound from this point forward in terms of going into the 80s, but in terms of embracing the whole sidelong epic pieces, this was kind of the last straw. Um, this features, of course, uh, the title track, Hemispheres, which takes up the entire uh, first side of the record. It's part, uh, part two of the whole Cygnus X1 series. And then you have on side two, Circumstances, uh, the trees, and then the big instrumental, La Villa Strangiato. Um, if a musician can play that song, I'm sure they can basically play anything that their heart desires. This is an absolutely fantastic Rush album and hands down my all-time favorite. So there you guys go. That is part three letters L to R of favorite albums of artists that I collect. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support this channel, be sure to check me out on Patreon. See you guys in the next video. And most importantly, keep the records spinning.